I <laughs> didn't see you there or hear you because I'm jackhammering in this park space. It's me, the autumnal construction worker. I'm taking a break to let you know that the final episode of 204 FM is out now. Yeah, I mean, this adventure has been a wild ride. We've seen McKenna, Dale, Boston, and Mabel. Oh, cute, sweet little Mabel. Go on wacky adventures, dipping in and out of the negasphere, which if you are not familiar, you gotta go listen to episodes one through four of 204 FM and catch up on this alternate reality universe overlay. I don't really get science, but you know what? I've had a great time meeting all of these characters and I hope you have too. This is episode five, The Unlikeliest of Friends, written by Robin Slate. Anyways, back to work. Ba 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 Winnipeg, the place where the two rivers meet. For centuries, people have been meeting here and most have continued on their way. But some of us remained, remained, remained. Welcome to One Trunk Theatre's 204 FM! <laughs> One, two, three! It's, it's our area, area code. code, we're under six feet of snow for half of the months of the year. But it's familiar. So what if mosquitoes bite? The floods are all right. Cause, Cause we, we get, get into the news for other things than being racist jerks. And we're together. Yes, we are. Well, some may wish they could go. go Jets. But where would you go? go? Jets. And why would you go? Go, Jets, go! We've got Disraeli Overplast, the, Sh the Shaw Rebchuk Bridge, Midtown Bridge, Queen Elizabeth Way, Arlington Bridge, Esplanade Real, <laughs> Ikea, Target. Not anymore. We're, We're good, good enough. enough. We are a pretty, legit, real city now. And we're together on 204 FM. On FM. These are the stories of Winnipeggers, as imagined by Winnipeggers for Winnipeggers. Tonight, episode five, The Unlikeliest of Friends, written by Robin Slade. Performed by Gwendolyn Collins, William Jordan III, Toby Hughes, Robin Slade, Gordon Tanner. Bonjour. And our super special guest, Ross McMillan. And featuring our musical guests, Carly Dow and Slow Lee. Now, without further ado, ready, set, tune in. Now, please listen carefully. You will hear a little collection of sounds, and your job is to figure out what it is, what's going on. Let the sounds paint a picture in your mind. Here goes. One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Three. <laughs> and now, here they are again. One. <laughs> Two. Three. <laughs> St stay tuned to find out what these sounds mean later in the story. But now... Coffee break! Bologna with French's yellow mustard on cool rye bread. This shit's like foie gras to me. Amen, my hard-hatted friend. Amen. Hey, what are you going to do for the next ten months? What's that? Well, I mean, November's right around the corner. Us autumnal construction workers have to keep busy in the off-season. Some of us take on a second job, you know, November through to August. Some of us time travel. What now? Hmm? Some of you take on a second job? <laughs> Not me, man. Not me. No, I just time travel. You what? I love baloney. A fucking men. <laughs> Back to work. Back to work. Lunch. 
lunchtime. Honey bear! Hi, guppy puppy. Just wanted to check in and make sure you're going to be home for dinner tonight. Ah, I wish I could, Bunny, but tonight's the night. You know we're going to be there. I know. Are you sure they're all going to agree? I mean, are they all going to be on board with the plan? All I can do is show up at the ledge and hope for the best. I wish I could see what you see. It sounds like a magical place. The Negosphere. But you get motion sick, baby. I know, I know I wouldn't like it. I can't do an escalator on the best of days. Well, be safe, boo-boo. All the best on your, um, trip? Is it a trip? Oh, it's a trip, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll see you later tonight. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, the autumnal construction worker. They're always just standing there. <laughs> Picture one, sign in hand. An upside-down smile on their sun-soaked face. Some might call it a frown, but that's not what it is. Just like that's not a pothole, it's a bird bath. <laughs> and that's not a broken fence, no. It's a generous portion of firewood, free for the taking. Thanks, city of Winnipeg. Hey, narrator, you okay? No, no, I'm not. There's this huge chunk of broken sidewalk outside my place, and I mean, you know, I know you're on your lunch break, but it's getting really dangerous. Uh, did you call 311? Yes. Well, just calm down. How about I send a guy what's, you know, got a sign to lay across it? Would you, please? You bet, Pally. You're not going to fix it, are you? Uh, <laughs> work's done! Nope. Whoa! 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was incredible! <laughs> Meet McKenna. She is one of four apathetic Winnipeggers who will converge at the ledge for magical reasons unbeknownst to them. But you, audience, you get the inside scoop. A spunky teen with an aptitude for b-ball and Greek mythology, McKenna adventured into the negosphere at the sneaky behest of the autumnal construction worker and found the courage to believe in herself when everyone else was trying to keep her down. Who are the other three? The three of the four I haven't mentioned? Keep your pants on. You'll meet them shortly. Hey, McKenna, you're back from the negosphere. So, how was it? Holy shit, it was nuts in there. I, it was just like Winnipeg, but it wasn't. The former mayor, Steve Juba, is a conductor of a monorail. I saw the St. Boniface Cathedral on fire. Pretty wild, eh? First time I went through, me and Burton Cummings fought a polar bear. Whoa. <laughs> was that real? Probably. Are dreams real? Yes. Yes. Ain't no one comes out of the negosphere unchanged, little buddy. Uh, I have to get to the golden boy. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. I'll see you in a couple hours. Ah, uh, yes, the negosphere. If you haven't been following our heroes, a little backstory's in order. There are many interesting things about Winnipeg's past. Some are tangible, like the pieces of the old streetcar rails that peek out of broken concrete on Memorial Boulevard. Some are intangible like the urban legend of an underground tunnel that ran between City Hall and the Leland Hotel. And then, there's the Negosphere. The Negosphere is not a dimension, per se, but more of an overlay, like a sun dog. It's there, but it's not, but it is, you know? <laughs> in the Negosphere, everything that has ever happened in Winnipeg, and anyone who's ever lived there, remains right now, sitting beside you on the bus, standing in front of you at the bank, passing you in the skywalk, is everyone that ever was. You can't see them, of course, unless you enter the Negosphere through one of the 147 points of access around the city. Let's catch up with our autumnal construction work to see a few of those super secret portals in action. Guess I better make the rounds. I gotta get everyone else in place before it's too late. Oh shit, there's my bus! Hey, wait up! All aboard the number 11! <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna make it. Does this pony stop at the Manitoba Museum? No! I go to the Centennial Concert Hall! Ah. Uh... Move to the back, please! What's that guy's problem? Hey, mind if I sit here? Not at all. Ooh, thanks. Cold out, hey? 
Yeah, did you hear it's going down to minus 30 tonight? I heard it was going down to minus 35. Yeah, well, I heard it was going down to minus 50. Is that with or without the wind chill? The wind chill is a lie meteorologists tell us to keep us all down. What? Oh, that sounds really? like... The alarm is confirmed. Oh, Wake oh, other people. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Uh, sorry I brought it up. Uh, this is my stock. You have a good one, eh? I got you too. Get off the bus! <laughs> If my timing is right, which it almost always is, man, this city's predictable. That sweet old lady Mabel should be arriving back at the museum admissions desk right about... My grandchildren said they'd meet me in the lobby here. So is that a yes to the audio guide? Okay. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Manitoba Museum audio guide, where man and nature meet. Oh, Mabel still doing in this heck hole of a city? You should have left years ago. Rang, rang, rattle, bang, bang, I'm gonna catch my fish all day. Uh, rang, um, rang, rattle, bang, bang, I'm gonna catch my fish all day. Oh, dear. Oh, I, I don't think you're supposed to be in the exhibit there, Mr. Autumnal Construction Worker. But that sign says not to go over the bar. Oh, my goodness, are you fishing? Yep, and drinking. Fishing and drinking, it's a pretty boss combo. Comes with my most righteous recommendation. Oh, I don't think you'll catch very many fish in there, dear. It's a diorama. Is it? It is. Is it? It is. Isn't it? Why don't you hop on over and have a sit with me? Oh, I couldn't. I've never broken a rule in my life. Oh, it'll be our little secret. Scout's honor, won't tell a soul. Oh, goodness, what? You know what? Okay. All right, here, you just oh, yeah, climb oh, on oh, over. Oh, 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 look at you, you punk. You're one brave granny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, what now? Well, you just enjoy a little fishing. Here, grab hold of the reel oh, there. Okay. You got it? Okay. And whatever you do, don't let go of the rod. Okay, no, okay. Wink. I'll catch you later. All right. Zwee. <laughs> this is so nice. I can barely remember the last time I went fishing. Why, it must have been that time that Bill and I took that little trip to Lake of the Woods. Oh, I was so afraid to get in the boat. Mabel, you silly goose, Bill said. Don't you know nothing bad ever happened in a boat? <laughs> I knew he was mistaken, of course. But somehow I wasn't afraid anymore. That was Bill through and through. Oh, 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 oh boy, what's this? Oh, by jeepers, I think I caught something. Oh, God dang it, fish, you're gonna pull me in! Whoa, whoa, whoa! And she's gone! Have a grand time in the negosphere, Mabel! See you in a few! <laughs> Man, my fortune cookie was right. I am a trustworthy guide and a good friend. Lucky numbers are two, zero, and four. Better head over to the walker. Ah. I mean the Bert, and meet up with that dope thespian. I just hope I can make it there before they break for a smoke. All right, cast, listen up. As you all know, Jeremy is no longer a part of this show. I had to fire him after he showed up for rehearsal wearing a toque. Oh. I shouldn't have to remind you that you are working for the No Hat Theater Company. It's not just a name, people. It's a philosophy, okay? Everyone, this is Boston Earwig. He'll be taking over for Jeremy. Hi, Boston. Welcome, Welcome here. All right. The big time. No hat King Lear. Breathe, Boston. Just breathe. Uh-oh. Here's Winnipeg Jet Blake Wheeler, and his theater debut is King Lear. Let's see what he's got. Meantime, we shall express our darker purpose. Give me the map there. Good. Keep going. Uh, uh, coach? I'm the director, Blake. Oh. Just call me Jonathan. Oh, well, I was thinking, Coach, like, shouldn't I have a hat? Like, a, like one of those king hats? A uh, crown? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, Blake, the whole oh, no, yeah. vision of our company... Yeah, crown! King crown! <laughs> He would normally wear one, but this part of the play is sort of like informal Friday. Good Lord, I'm only asking for a king hat. Yes, yes, of course, an excellent idea. Woo! Go Jets, go! Go Jets, go! Woo! Crown for 
for Mr. Wheeler! Gah, this is so unintegrity-ish. I need a smoke. Hey. Hey. Damn, I left my smokes inside. Ah, oh, here, have one of mine. Thanks, man. Hey, no problem. Yeah, here, have a light, too. Thanks. Um, you doing construction? Yeah, sort of in a Winnipeg kind of way. You mean you just dig up the road for no reason and get in everyone's way? <laughs> no, I do more important things than that. Oh, yeah, like what? Like watch the portals. <gasps> Which portals, you will say? The portals which only exist in Winnipeg. The portals to the negosphere. <gasps> The negosphere, you will say? Yes, the thing that makes Winnipeggers feel stuck, feel trapped. Manosphere? Uh, listen to me now. There's a reason for that feeling of stuckness. And it's not just the cold and the mosquitoes and the chronic small-mindedness of the place. <laughs> the explanation is in the negosphere. And you're standing right next to a portal. Oh, yeah? Yeah, pu that puddle behind you, special portal. Get a booter, enter the negosphere. <laughs> Uh-huh. Listen, thanks for the smoke. I gotta get back to it. Some of us work, eh? Uh, hey, Boston, watch yeah. where you're walking! What? Ow! Booter! Say hi to Steven Juba for me. What? Whoa! <coughs> Whoa! Whoa! Let's see, we've got McKenna, the spunky teen. She's already back from the Negosphere and on her way to the ledge. Mabel, that sweet old cinnamon bun and Boston earwig, the actor, they're currently in the Negosphere, so that's uh, three down and one to go. One at a time through the revolving door. Yes, mother. <sighs> Welcome to the Bay, home of Bay Days. Special on right now, bum pants, Dunbar's toothpaste and Stanley's knee cream, and space hats. God, Mother, is, is it even open? Where are all the customers? What are you talking about, Dale? It's Bay Days. Look at all these people. Mother, there are about ten people in this entire department store right now, including the staff. There's nothing more depressing than the Bay, especially at Christmas. Why did you make me come here? I have to use the restroom. Uh-oh. Looks like the men's is out of order. Mother, that sign says permanently closed. You see, they don't even have the money to get their washrooms repaired. It's closed for good. Oh, I'm sure it's just a misprint. Well, we'll have to leave. I really have to go. Do you just have to tinkle? Yes, Mother. Then just go to the women's washroom. I'll guard the door for you. Ah, fine. Whoa, it's huge in here, and it smells great, and there are all these fun vanities with lights around the mirrors. Oh, oh God, there's a woman pooping in here. <clears throat> oh, hey, <laughs> Tinkle Buddies. Uh, yeah, the men's was closed. Are you working on repairing the washroom? No, why? Because you're dressed as an autumnal construction worker? Oh, no, I work exclusively outside, hence the autumnal reflective vest. I'm here for pleasure only. I love coming to this washroom. It's like stepping back in time. You know, it's like a, like a portal to another place. And the men's washroom is permanently closed. But hell, when you gotta go, you gotta go, you know? Oh. <laughs> Much nicer in here anyway. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Yeah. Uh, um. Are you looking at my foot? Nope. Are you intentionally not looking at my foot? No, I just... Because there's no need to avoid you're it. You're wearing I mean, one it's rubber just, boot. It's, a, it's, it's just a regular, weird. It's a human it's condition. It's part of the boot. human... I saw really, that I it's one it's boot. It's a fungus, okay? I have a... Fungus. I wasn't looking at it, okay? <laughs> oh, hey, would you look at this, though? Isn't that a shame? One of the marquee bulbs is burnt out around that mirror. You know, it just really bugs me when something like that is out of place. Or maybe it's not burnt out. Maybe it just needs a little tweak. Eh, Dale? Catch you later. Hey, how did you know my... My name? Yeah, yeah, I do hate that light. In fact, it's bugging me just looking at it. I'm gonna give it a little twist. Uh 
Wow. Wow. And Dale the sweat panted wonder makes four. That's everybody. Once everyone's gone through to the negosphere and found the items they need, they should all pop back out at the legislative grounds. Time doesn't work the same way there as it does here. Minutes feel like hours. Oh, which means I better boogie if I'm going to be there to sherp them up the proverbial mountain. What does the autumnal construction worker know that we don't? What exactly is causing this feeling of stuckness in Winnipeg? Why? When I look up at the golden boy, do I get the eerie feeling he's watching me? Answers to these questions and more after the break. And now, a word from our sponsor. Gosh, Mom, I'm bored. Bored? Well, that's no good. Have you played with all your expensive electronics? Duh, Mom, but they're all stupid and dumb, and I'm bored! But we just got you the latest model. Your father's gonna have an inappropriate emotional response when he hears about this. Is your child bored with all the shiny electronic products you've given them over the years? Yeah. Do they have the attention span of a brand new puppy? <laughs> woo, woo. If this sounds like a familiar conversation to you, we've got the solution. Old Can. Old Can? Old Can? Old Can. Old Can is an old can that can't be beat. Your child will have hours of fun looking at it, in it, and around it. Old Can up to your ear and hear the ocean. With a little imagination, Old Can can be as new as a new can. It's Old Can. Mom, look! Old Can's wearing my sock. <laughs> oh, now Old Can is sitting on the couch. <laughs> oh, Old Can, you're my best friend. Okay, now you two wash up and make dinner. Okay, Mom. Come on, Old Can. Old Can. Can't can like a new can can. It's Old Can. Old Can! And now back to your regular scheduled programming. Well, that's weird. Everybody should be here by now. I I'm pretty sure that my math was solid on this one. Osborne three day grand at Manitoba building. Um, could you put down the old lady ramp, please? Beep, beep, beep. Thank you! Ah, uh, buses. Mabel! Boston Earwig! As hey. I live and breathe, you both made it! Hey, it's you again. Well, you know this guy, too? Yeah, we met earlier today outside the Burton Cummings Theatre downtown. Mabel, how was your museum adventure? It was exciting and confusing. This is all actually very confusing. It'll all make sense soon. Okay. Boston, Mabel, you two should get acquainted while we wait for the other two to arrive. Hey, oh, oh, this has been the best day of my life! Dale Weeb, my man! <laughs> How was the social? Oh, I wish I could have been there for the Grease Mega Mix. Uh, go, 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 Grease Lightning! Hey, a Tunnel construction worker. Who are all these other people? Hey, McKenna! Okay, former mayor Steve Juba gave me the blueprints to the ledge when I was in the negosphere. It was so cool. I went digging through the Manitoba archives so I could learn more about it. Man, that place is terrifying. I saw about a hundred spiders and it was so dusty. It was... Uh, uh, oh, go, 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 go. Go Jets, go Dean. Thanks. <laughs> You're a champ, McKenna. I mean, I can totally see it. You are going to change the face of this city one day. Shut up. No, I'm not. Whatever. I brought a sword back with me! Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! I had quite the adventure in the negosphere, the manosphere. Not negosphere. Whatever. Mind you, love truly is the greatest adventure, and I spent so many wonderful years with my sweet Bill before he passed, bless him, and now it's just me, Mabel! I can't even stand how cute that is. Oh! Uh. If, uh, if anyone cares, uh, I won the lotto tree at a social, so, so that's pretty cool. Not sword cool, maybe, but like four or five bucks kind of cool. Dale, that is very cool. Thanks. I took something back from the negosphere, too. Look at this. 
It's a very excellent painting. Who are those two people? Do, do you know them? No, it's just, it's just a painting some guy gave me. Some guy? Yeah, his name was Randy, and he gave it to me for probably a very mission-important reason. Shut up, McKenna! I think it's time for me to do a little bit of explaining here. Um, I don't really know where to start, so I guess I'll just start here. It's real. That feeling we all feel living here in Winnipeg, like uh, you never asked to live here and somehow you can't figure out how to leave, <laughs> it's real. We were born into restlessness. We're haunted by the ghost of our circumstances. Whoa. Ah, and it's all thanks to our friend the Golden Boy. Look at him up there, all shiny and mean. He's been stuck there for a very long time and he's been making the rest of us feel stuck too. We have to get all the way up there to the very top of the dome. I'll explain more along the way. Did you just crack a tall boy? You bet your booter, Dale. You're all gonna have to chug these. It's the quickest way for us to get back into the negosphere at the same time. So that opens a portal, cracking four beers at once? Mm. And standing in this bus shack. You ever wonder why the stop's always empty? Yeah. Yeah, everyone take two tall boys. McKenna, sorry, but I gotta be an adult here and say you can't have a beer. What? Yeah, you're gonna have to go stare into those floodlights, kiddo. You know, do Purple City to get back into the negosphere. Ugh, it's not like I haven't la, had la, one. La, 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 la. <laughs> you three, start chugging. <sighs> the first time that I ever went into the negosphere, it was May long, and I was out throwing the old disc around a Cinnaboyne park. It flew into the Leo Mole Sculpture Garden, and while I was there, I, uh, poke the nipple of one of those bronze babes, <laughs> and bam, I got all pixelated, and smoke was like whooshing around me, and when all my bits came back together, I was puffing cigars in a parlor with the Richardsons. We talked about carpets and dogs and whatever until um, I asked for a Red Bull, and then I was sort of ripped backwards out of the room. And I guess that's how it happens, you know? You stop actively participating in the overlay, and then the magic is ruined. After that, I would go out just about every weekend and try to find new portals. One afternoon, I was eating my weight in dim sum in Chinatown, thinking maybe there was a portal in one of these steamed pork buns, if only I could find it. Sounds to me like you were just having lunch. Yeah, you caught me. But the craziest thing happened. On the bottom of my bill was a riddle. Oh, that's not so crazy. My bill used to make up riddles for me all the time. What's got two eyes, a big heart, and loves you to bits, Mabel, he'd say. <laughs> and I'd say, you! <laughs> Mabel, you're honestly too cute for words. You gotta knock it off. <laughs> what did the riddle say? Oh, I, uh, I have it here. <sighs> Innovation, adventure, energy, art. Where the false boy lives, that's where you start. Now wash your hands. Get rid of the germies. Assemble a team so you can free Hermes. That is just terrible writing. My first one-man fringe show was much better than that. Oh, I volunteer at the fringe. Maybe I worked at your venue. Ah, maybe you remember this then. <clears throat> oh, my hands are burning. Ah, oh, it burns. Oh, God. Flashback. Damn this PTSD. For a second I was working at the 7-Eleven again, handling hoagies straight out of the microwave. And then there was the Slurpee machine. <laughs> you see, uh, uh, back false in boy, the false boy, who's the false boy? The golden boy. Dale, that's not a real boy up there. It's Hermes trapped in gold. Wait. Hermes, as in the Greek god of travel, that Hermes? Oh, my Bill and I used to love traveling! Yeah, we get it! You had real love, and we are all super jealous, but Mabel! But after he passed... Stop, just I please, just stop! I just could bring myself to leave Winnipeg! Uh, directors were always telling me I had to leave Winnipeg. What about Hermes? He's trapped, and we're gonna free him. Whoa! How do you get trapped? Hermes was accidentally turned to gold by a bunch of Masonic wizards, 
and they panicked and stuck him up on top of the legislative building. I guess they were embarrassed, you know, Doggy did a bad thing, so he buries the evidence. Winnipeg is like the unkempt backyard of the world. Anyway, since he got stuck, he's been making everyone else feel stuck too. It's like, uh, like radiation, except it's coming from his angry heart. It'll stay like that forever if we don't free him from that attractive prison. We better finish chugging. And in that moment, they were the same. As their bodies got all pixelated and smoke was like whooshing around, they were not divided by age. They were no longer just a teen, an old lady, a guy, and a guy in sweatpants. They were all at once innovators, artists, and adventurers, fueled by spirited energy on a journey to discover their collective potential. When all their bits came back together, they were in the negosphere, surrounded by the history of Winnipeg. Every person, every moment trapped in time, united by the same feeling, restlessness, a desire for more, wrapped in a thermal layer of apathy. I'm here too. Mabel. Present. Dale Weeb. Are you guys looking at my foot? Great. Now we have to get to the top of the dome at the top of the ledge. McKenna, can you look at the blueprints of this place and see if there's any way that we could get in without getting caught? Okay. You got it. Hmm. Looks like there's a secret staff entrance here over here on the left. Wait. Everyone just wait. Why are we doing this? I mean, I don't know you. I certainly don't know you. Why are we all just hopping aboard with this insane plan to free Hermes? I just don't know what my objective is here. Boston, you're stuck, man. We're all stuck. I mean, you're torn between staying in Winnipeg and committing to the warm, familial theater community here or jumping ship like a dumb coward and moving to Toronto. I get it, it's a tough call. McKenna, you're a cool teen. You got your whole life ahead of you, and you want more than Manitoba has to offer, which honestly is millions of hectares of gorgeous prairie where you can live a comfortable, affordable life. But yeah, you could probably do better. (laughs) And you, Mabel, you're the cutest old lady that ever walked the face of the earth, and that's all I gotta say about that. Fresh. (laughs) Dale Weeb, you're a real sourpuss. This morning I wanted cereal but there wasn't any milk left, so I didn't eat. See, that's what I'm talking about. You see everything, glass half full of shit. And that's a sad way to move through the world, Dale. I know. We have a unique opportunity here. I mean, we could grab hold of our destinies, smush them together like a seven-layer dip and become the thing that everyone wants to eat at the party. Let's look beyond ourselves for a hot minute. And free Hermes, I mean, not for us, but for them. Let's free Winnipeg. Are we in? Or what? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm in. Oh, 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 wait, it's a secret mission. Okay. All right, come on, guys. In here. Okay, according to the blueprint, blueprints, the door to the ladder should be up here on the main floor and to the right. But it's heavily guarded by two large buffalo. Look Bison. At that. Oh, no. oh, a walking tour. We could join the crowd and blend right in. Good thinking, Mabel. <laughs> and if you turn your attention to the pool of the Black Star, you'll notice we can hear sound from all over the building. The Masonic wizards built it this way so that no one could tell secrets. Oh, oh wow. Oh, really? really? no, that's true. That's true. Hmm. Guys, there's the door. There's the couple. Who? The couple from the painting I brought back from the negosphere. Uh, where? I, I don't see them. Right there. 
Hey, you! Oh. You! Oh, well, hello there. What brings you to the ledge? Uh, my wife and I are big history buffs. We just love walking tours and the like. Do we ever? Just call us the history honeys. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this painting. It looks just like them. Uh... <laughs> no, it, it doesn't. Sure it does. Look at the shape of the face here and here. They don't look the same as the painting at all. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They look exactly the same to me, exactly. No, look at them. Look at them. They don't look the same at all. Hi there. The history honeys. See? <laughs> nope, they don't. They do. We, we do. do. See, they do. I don't think they do. Sure they do. No, they really don't. Well, I think they do. I was given this painting for a reason, McKenna. I just know it. Either way, uh, we are pleased as punch to meet you all. Yeah, I read online that you're not supposed to feed the big bison over there, but I just couldn't help myself. I brought some of my famous granola to see if I could sneak a snack to them. Whoa, your granola's famous? <laughs> well, it is amongst the Worthington Simon clan. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a handful? I'd love to feed a bison. Sure thing, you big teddy bear. Here, have a Ziploc. Oh, <laughs> look, guys! He's eating right out of my hand. <laughs> Dale, you're a genius. You're leading them away from the door to the roof. Huh, his tongue is so big. He's slobbering all over my arms. <laughs> Come on here, big guy. Who wants a granola snack? <laughs> Biggie Bison wants a granola snack. Oh, he loves it. Can you get a picture of this? Oh, oh wow. Well, okay, bye. Yes, it did well by. It's been bye. very nice bye. to meet you all. Bye, Granola. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye now. Bye. bye. The bison are out of the way. This looks like our window, crew. Let's get in the door and head up to the dome. Hey, 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 hey you come oh. back here. Hey. Oh, Miss no. Prince. Guards. Uh, should I go back and get some more granola from the painting people? These ones are human, Dale. I don't think you can lure them away with oats. Uh. I've got this one. Oh, oh Jesus, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, Watch it. Are you sure you want to take these guards on, Mabel? You're a little, um, well, you're quite... Uh... Oh, quite what? Small? Old? Well, you're right, Boston Earwig, I am. But I've never felt bigger. I've never felt younger. For the first, first time since my bill passed, I feel confident. Mabel, that's awesome. Hey, who goes there? How about you, thug? Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll hold them off. You my guys go on up to the ladder. I'll be right behind you. I wish she was my grandma. She's giving both those guards a run for their money. Oh! oh she just bonked their heads together. Now they're on the ground. Woohoo! A dollar! What's that, Dale? Uh, I was just scratching at one of these lotto games, and I, I won a dollar. We're halfway up a very precarious set of stairs here, Dale. This is not the time. A tunnel construction worker. What year were you born? Hmm. Can't say I know the answer to that. <laughs> Why do you ask? There's a combination lock on the hatch of this dome, and I can't crack it. I've tried everything, from the year of the Red River Rebellion to the number of Slurpees consumed in an average week. Dale, you're getting gray stuff everywhere. I just have to match these numbers, and then I'll stop, I promise. What numbers, Dale? Well, this game's called Billion Dollar Boy. I have to match the numbers to the year the ledge was built. I've got the one, the nine, another one, and the... Nine! Mabel! Mabel! Oh! <laughs> the year was 1919, when a handsome young doctor put down his cigarette and pulled me out of my mother's womb. <laughs> yes, one, nine, one, nine. It's oh. open. Oh, my head. Oh, it looks like the guards are regaining consciousness. I'll try to hold them off with my slow sign. It won't work for long, though. Eventually, they're just going to walk right around it. Hey, you can't go up there. Uh-oh, buddy. The sign says we have to slow down. Oh, man. If we have to slow down, we won't catch them in time. We should have regained consciousness earlier. You're right. Oh. I can only slow them up a little longer. Go! Okay, thanks a ton, no construction worker. Okay, let's open the hatch. Uh. 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 Whoa, it's so cold up here. Wow, you can see the whole city. Uh, Dale, can you reach it? I, can you reach Hermes? I, I can't get up high enough. This wind is nuts. Get up on my shoulders, Dale. No way, man. Dale. This is the supporting role I was born to play. Oh, Boston, don't sell yourself short. I do remember your friend 
Morning Show. You are marvelous. It's like I was right there in that 7-Eleven with you. You're a leading man through and through. How many stars would you give me? Ah, Boston, it's not about the stars. It's about the layup, the follow-through. All my life, I've been told I'm a solid guy. It's time I embraced that very weak compliment and did something good. Get on my shoulders! And they climbed, forming an adorable human ladder with Dale on the bottom, Boston on his shoulders, McKenna on his shoulders, and sweet little Mabel on hers, standing tall together. They reached skywards until Mabel's frail hand rested gently on the golden boy's outstretched arm. What do we do now? The autumnal construction worker never told us what we do once we get up here. I'm hungry! What? What? It's been a long day. Normally this is when my bill, bless his heart, would make me a little snack. Uh, I swiped some cold cuts from the Transcona social. Will that do? That would be lovely, Dale. Pass it up! Was this in your pocket, Dale? Oh, Dale, it's all fuzzy. Yeah. This slice of wet salami will do nicely, Dale. Thank you. Oh, oh no. The wind took my meat tree. The slice of wet salami flew up and landed squarely on the shoulder of the golden boy. (laughs) A deafening clap tore through the sky. Mabel, McKenna, Boston and Dale scrambled to safety through the open window of the dome as the Golden Boy's 23.75 carat skin cracked and split. And when the glittering dust settled, (coughs) (coughs) Oh my word! Hermes? For real? Look at his tiny... Hey, Dale, is this like the Wizard of Oz? Is he, like, gonna tell us how, like, smart and brave we are and give us presents? That's... McKenna, is that what you took away from the film? McKenna, it's a grass is greener kind of story. No, you're both wrong. It's a biopic about a young me! Silence! For 97 years I have stood encased in gold, cursing the Masonic wizards who left me this way. Winnipeg used to be a happy, prosperous place. Did you know that? But on the day I became the city's prisoner, as the crane hoisted me up into the air and my cries for freedom disappeared on the wind, I vowed to make every single person feel as stuck as I did. For 97 years, I watched and I listened. I listened to you Winnipeggers complain about parking complain about both the heat of the summer and the cold of the winter. Complain about how nothing good ever happens here. And then when something, someone proposes a street festival or an art installation or something really cool, you say, what, here? No thanks. You devalue yourselves in a way that you think is humble and endearing when really it is ludicrous and not even the slightest bit cute. You think you feel restless? Try standing on one foot for almost a hundred years and see how you like it! But, but you're free now, Mr. Hermes. Yeah! No thanks to you! Actually, it's all thanks to them. Who the hell are you? Actually, you can thank the time-honored social tradition of salami shoulder. People really do that? With abandon! Oh, I hate Winnipeg! Well, why, dear? Did you not hear everything I just said? This place hates itself. I can't wait to get out of here. It's not all that bad, Hermes. What? You have a place called Garbage Hill. You send your children to play on a place called Garbage Hill. Hey, I love tobogganing at Garbage Hill. Ah! And your rivers are disgusting. Oh, they're just silty. You're the murder capital of the country. Yeah, but it's per capita, right? So it's really not that many. Silence! No, you silence. Only real Winnipeggers can say bad things about this city. And you, sir, are most definitely not a real Winnipegger. (laughs) Oh, I am going to call my chiropractor and my travel agent, and then I am back in my bags and flying somewhere hot. Oh, Arizona is a lovely spot. It's a dry heat, you know? That would be so good for my asthma. Tell me about it. I stop wheezing altogether when I'm down there. What are you 
you do a timeshare or what? Yeah, yeah, with three of my girlfriends. Oh, do we have a great time? Why don't I send you our shared calendar? And yeah. if there's a time that works for you, you can have the place to yourself. You seem a little stressed. Oh, that would be so great. Thank you. I suppose I owe you, all of you, a thank you. Yeah, duh. So, thank you. And goodbye! That was wild. Yeah. Oh, man, <laughs> was it ever. Uh, I guess we'll all be taken off in our own way. After all we've been through together, it just feels a little weird to, you know, part ways. Uh, maybe we don't all have to go just yet. Yeah, Dale. Sounds good. I mean, I'm definitely still going to move to Toronto to get discovered and become famous. But honestly, I haven't thought about it all day. Maybe I'll stick around for audition season and start making serious plans after that. Well, really, I should stick around till after Fringe, because I know a couple people in that. And after that, I'll definitely go. Uh, I don't have to be home for a while. Anybody feel like going to Sal's? I would love a nip, dear. It's settled then, we're going to Sal's. <laughs> hey, you know, we should come up with a name for ourselves. You know, something like, uh, like the Famous Five. Uh, the, the Famous Five were the women who fought to get the women the vote. Some women. Actually, only women like them. They were pretty racist. How about, uh, the Winnipeg Jets? There's, uh, there's a team with that name already. Really? What do they play? How about we call ourselves the Googs? Uh, that also sounds racist. Have you never had a Goog from the BDI? Oh, McKenna, it is heaven. It's an upside-down blueberry milkshake and a hot fudge sundae. How about the unlikeliest of friends. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> Just don't call me late for dinner. Maple. Well, thank you for joining us, dear faithful listeners. We've taken you through the many closed down floors of the bay from Transcona to St. Boniface, West Broadway to St. James. We painted a picture of the city we love and now we send you forth into the summer to Jazz Fest, to Folk Fest, to Fringe Fest, to Folklorama, to many and every fest. May your days be full of mosquito bites and sunburns and your nights full of laughter and love. This has been 204 FM, brought to you by Bumpheads. Give it up again for Carly Dow and Slow Lee. Yeah.